My name is Lucas Davis. I work for the State of Utah, uh, Department of Administrative Services, uh, Division of Facilities Construction Management. Um, I am a project manager. In 2009, uh, spring of 2009, with the tough economic times, the governor um, asked us as uh, agencies to be able to do more with less as a state government and come up with innovative ideas to be able to save money. Um, the idea that we came up with and what we're presenting today is the idea of a video conference. And video conferencing itself is not so new. Video conferencing has been around a while. Pretty, pretty understandable innovation it says, you know, why go from point A to point B when we can video conference and, re and record live and just be able to communicate like a telephone call. Um, and so that was kind of a, a half of a part of our innovation. The, the other half was to be able to purchase a wireless video camera that we are able to use on construction sites. Now the DFCM manages um, somewhere around a one and a half billion dollars in construction every year. Um, our organization ranges from uh, capital development, which is new construction buildings on higher education campuses, science buildings, uh, trades buildings, whatever the case may be. Um, we also do all the improvements on state projects, roofing, paving, interior remodels, fire alarm upgrades, um, you name it, if a building needs improvement, that's what our organization does for the state of Utah. Um, on the other half of our organization is also the maintenance side, which employs facilities managers, um, groundskeepers, uh, building operators, pretty much the whole gamut of the building uh, environment. Um, so as part of that innovation, we were spending a lot of time traveling because of the size of our state. Um, we have projects that are in Dixie, which is down in St. George, Utah, which is about 300 miles from here, Cedar City, Vernal, all several hundred miles from here. And one of the things we were able to identify is that if we could cut some of that travel out, we could then save quite a bit, significant amount of money, uh, both through uh, labor hours, travel time, um, meals, expenses, uh, expenses of travel itself, whether it be a car to drive or and sometimes a state plane to fly to the remote parts of the state. And uh, so we set out to employ this system, um, put together a team of myself, uh, who, like I said, I am the project manager. I helped bring this together. Uh, Gordon Jensen, who is a representative from technology services for the state. And um, he was instrumental in coordinating the technical side of it, making sure that all the connections were in place, making sure that the coordination had happened to make sure these connections were possible. Um, Lynn Hendricks, who is my boss, who is the assistant director over construction um, for the DFCM, as well as Brian Bells, who helped do a little bit of the research and was able to identify this camera as maybe be able to fit, fit our needs. So we built this conference room I'm standing in today, and we purchased equipment um, that consists of two 50-inch uh, plasma flat screens, which you can see here behind me, uh, an HD camera. This is a Tanberg equipment. It also came with a Tanberg, what's called a codec, which is kind of the brains of a video conferencing system. Um, we also employed um, some audio equipment. We're able to get some nice microphones, build a new conference table to help us with our video conference experience. Um, and we spent around $105,000 roughly in the construction for equipment for everything to get this room online and operational. Now one of the things that's a challenge when we do video conferencing and especially in remote parts of the state is bandwidth. Um, for us, we have what's called the Utah Educational Network here in the state. And the Utah Educational Network, or UEN, has set up a sort of a private internet um, throughout the state at all of our uh, places of learning, both post-secondary and higher education. And so we've got kind of a resource there to utilize the bandwidth of this private internet connection to reach out to these remote parts of the state on a network that the state had already set up for distance education. Um, like I said, somewhere around 500 sites between all of our post-secondary and our uh, higher education sites uh, throughout the state. So that was really instrumental in being able to coordinate with them and uh, getting this camera online. In the first year that we had it operational, as I said, it was started up in about July of 09. And through the end of 2010, we saved about $190,000. And one of the things that we came to realize is not only did it save us money, and you know, which was kind of the prime goal, and it more or less paid for the room and uh, made it a good investment for us, but the other thing that we uh, recognized is that we were able to save travel and time for um, the people we'd hired, architects, engineers, and contractors. A lot of them are located here in the Salt Lake Valley, which is where we're at. 
And instead of doing those same things, traveling down to 300 miles to St. George or to Vernal or to wherever the case may be in the state, that they were able to come to our office, participate in our design meetings, in our construction meetings, in our progress meetings, and be able to do those same uh, savings. And so we saw that reflected in our prices because when we sent out designs and contracts out to bid, we, we were able to recapture some of that money as well by saving them money. Um, this also worked for contractors. Um, most of the big contractors in our state have recognized this technology that we are trying to use and have installed small video conferencing systems in the remote locations um, in job trailers on job sites and are able to transport those around the state as they move from job site to job site for the same reason, you know, on top of the wireless video camera that we can also do um, direct video conferencing to the construction trailers, which has helped them save money as well. All right, so one of the things we're going to show you real quick is our remote wireless video camera that we have on site. Right now, um, it is down in uh, Cedar City, Utah, which is about 250 miles from here. And we're going to uh, go ahead and display a new Southern Utah University Gibson Science Center edition that we are working on. Um, as you can see, part of our presentation skill with video conference is to be able to do uh, share documents and drawings with the other end of the video conference user um, through laptops that are hooked up through PC cables on our on our uh, desktop here on our conference table. And so what I've got here is kind of just a cover sheet of the design package of the, when the building was in design. Um, this is 100% construction documents and theoretically this is what the building should have looked like once it was done. And what we're going to do is go ahead and move over here with Jared Roper who is from ProEdge Technology. Jared is um, been instrumental in helping us get it set up at various locations when we do our wireless video camera and currently we just have the one unit and so we've been moving it from construction program to program as kind of pilot test to help us find out what our needs are as far as wireless communication on site is. Um, Jared, would you go ahead and introduce yourself? And yes, this is Jared Roper with ProEdge Technology. We've been working with the DSCM and rolling out the wireless technology. Um, Jared's going to go ahead and pan and zoom in a little bit on the bill outside of the building. Um, if you can remember the drawing we looked at over here, this is the actual constructed building. Um, you can see a lot of the same features that were supposed to be there in design, and I'll be darned, it turned out like it was supposed to. We've got our columns. Uh, we've got some greenhouses up there on the top of the new Science Center building. Um, essentially, what we're trying to demonstrate is that you know we're on site with this wireless camera, and he's able to pan and zoom in and show us some pretty good detail about construction objects and whether it be concrete finishes or sheet metal finishes, uh, progress meetings, whatever the case may be that we're going to use this camera for. And this is kind of the uh, meat of what our innovation is, is that we're able to take this camera onto remote job sites, tether it in wirelessly, and transport it around the job site, and cut out some of those um, on-site meetings. Of course, everything that you see of wireless video camera is not going to cut out all of our meetings. But essentially, we've cut our meetings in about half. And like I said, this site happens to be about 250 miles, which, as you can imagine, you know, two or three, about three hours in a car, three and a half hours in a car, or we jump on a state plane and run down there. And the savings can be quite significant. I'm going to have Jared go ahead and uh, start moving from the outside of the building. I'm going to move down into the vestibule here on the right that they're working through and show us some of the interior space. As you can see, the video reception is pretty good quality. It's not perfect, it's not, you know, at site, but it's good enough that, like I said, we can cut out about half of our meetings and really be able to see what's going on the job site without having to be there. Um, Jared is on site helping us today. Typically, however, what we do is have Jared go down there, help us get it set up, and train the superintendent on the job site to be able to handle the camera. That way, any given day, we can call him up, say, um, John, Joe, Bob, run out to the job site. We'd like to see what the issue is with the glazing and the conference room here and he would be able to grab that camera, zip out to the site, zoom in and say, hey, this is the problem, the sill's not built correctly, the uh, glass is cracked, the uh, light switch is not meeting code requirements because it's too close to the floor to the window frame. Um, so what he's doing is able to show us in there, he's measuring something, zooming in on for us. And this is kind of in a lighted corridor. Um, what we're going to do next is kind of turn to the right and go into a non-lit room and turn on the light on the camera and kind of show you that we can get into spaces that aren't necessarily wired or have lighting in them as well. Um, so here he is in a, a dark room with the light on on the camera. 
Um, again, this camera, the wireless camera, is a unit built by Tandberg, who is now owned by Cisco. Zoom in a little bit and look at some of these labels. There's a certification. Uh, as you can see, Fire Troll Protection Systems. It was uh, certified by charting. As you can see, the capability of the camera is pretty good, and this is really the innovation for us, is being able to get that camera out on the job site and to um, utilize it in cutting additional progress meetings and site meetings and so on and so forth out of the loop. So, And there he is zooming up on a strobe above him in the ceiling. How far up there would you say that is, Jared? That's about four feet away from me now. About four feet. And so he's got a pretty good optical zoom on the camera, and like I said, able to get some pretty good detail about what's going on, what we're able to see at the job site, and really been instrumental. We're, we're currently in a dark room. We at, do have a light. In a, you know, it's definitely going to improve our situation. I'm going to be about 10 feet away from the wall okay. and zoom in on that same box. So about 10 feet back and four foot overhead still. And um, so some pretty good detail, able to pick some things out, some part numbers, some, like I said, serial numbers, identify some components, and really be able to identify problems remotely. So. All right, Jared. Well, I think that'll take care of us. I appreciate your time today and appreciate you getting down there and uh, hooking this up for us and showing us what the cap camera's capable of. And uh, we will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. As you can see, uh, our wireless camera has uh, been a great asset, um, really a functional piece of our technology. And really the you know, prime focus for us is the innovation over the award side is that that you know, video conferencing, like I said, has been around, has been in use. People know what video conferencing is, but we kind of tried to reach out and extend that a little farther and employ another aspect of that and really make it you know, more viable and cost-saving solution for us. Um, as far as ongoing costs, you know, like I would mentioned, we spent about 105 building the room. Um, our one wireless camera was somewhere around $4,000. And we just own the one right now. And our plan is that once we kind of get some of the wrinkles ironed out and are really able to employ it at various job sites and really, you know, we would like to put them out on four or five job sites a year. And um, technology, of course, is always changing. And I uh, mentioned a little bit earlier, the UEN backbone for us has really made, us, made a big contribution in getting that bandwidth up and being able to employ the wireless camera. Uh, one of the issues that we do have on site currently are that wireless antennas um, are still inherently kind of line of sight, so to speak. And so as the building goes up, um, we have to employ additional wireless antennas. Once the walls of the building go up, where it makes it a little bit more difficult to walk the job sites to get into the building, such as Jared did. And so we have to go down and either get the college wireless network up and running or, like I said, employ additional antennas of our own. And we're still working through a little bit of that, uh, trying to make sure that the uh, video was seamless and doesn't have a lot of bandwidth problems and connections. When it does, it, gets, it breaks it up and uh, can become a little hard to, hard to watch. One of the other things that we've seen coming down the pipeline that may help us in our, uh, the future is the capability of satellite uh, broadband, which of course would not need wireless networks, which would not need our UEN network from point A to point B, which of course would just stream directly to a satellite and beam straight back to us. And, and kind of cut out that middle hardwire connection that really is kind of a limiting factor for us on a lot of these job sites. And, you know, that may be two or three years down the road, maybe five at this point. Uh, definitely is something that we've seen out in the marketplace and that they are trying to take advantage of and working on. Um, as far as ongoing costs, um, it's really minimal for us. We pay around $1,300 a year for two phone lines in this room and two network connections. And that is what uh, the state's Department of Technology Services charges us to maintain and keep those lines active. And that's really the only ongoing cost we have with this room. And so it's really, you know, it's been an upfront chunk of money. But after that, it's really saved us a lot of money going forward. It's just a conference room. And not only were we able to use it and employ it for uh, job meetings, construction meetings, site meetings, we're able to use the conference room as you would any conference room. Um, and able to do video conferencing with other agencies and um, so on and so forth. So it's kind of been a two-piece um, project for us from that standpoint as far as the innovation and the technology goes and really been a great asset. So um, I think I've about used up my time. I appreciate you watching our video today. And like I said, I'm a little jealous I'm not there. And hope you're having a great trip and a safe trip. And uh, thank you very much.